This program was paid for by Water of Life Church. From Water of Life Ministries in Plano, Texas, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is speaking through his servants to the world. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying today. Let us join Doyle Davidson and others of Water of Life, sowing the Word of God in spirit and in truth. Hello, I'm Doyle Davidson, servant and apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, ministering globally to the body of Christ in Dallas and Fort Worth, Texas, sent by God to your house to declare unto you the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. First Corinthians 15, 3 and 4, tell us what the gospel is, how that Jesus Christ died by our sins, according to scripture, he was buried, he rose again the third day according to the scripture. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Thank God. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, sent me to heal the broken heart, preach deliverance to the captives, recover sight to the blind, set at liberty to them that are bruised. Amen. Thank God. The word is not the give it your heart, in your mouth, there's a word of faith, which I preach. You can mess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, play with your heart, and God raise you from the dead, you shall be saved with the heart, man believe it, and the righteousness with the mouth confession is made under salvation. And by the shame of the gospel of Christ, there's a power of God under salvation. To everyone that believe it, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek, there is the righteousness of God revealed by faith to faith. I tell it's written, the just shall live by his faith. Amen. I want to welcome everyone receiving this broadcast on live stream, Roku, Apple TV, YouTube. Thank God, Shortwave Radio, and other devices. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Terry Brown, co-host, present with me. Good evening. Good evening. Amen. Kathy Davidson, co-host, present with me. Good evening. Good evening. And Anthony Reese, apostle, present with me this evening. Yes, good evening. Anthony will be addressing the world tonight from the platform, and it's great to have him with us. You're going to enjoy it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank God. I think we need the my girls out, right? Amen.
Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Thank God. Anyone got anything to say before Anthony comes to speak? Jesus. Amen. And race. Amen. Um, thank, God. thank God. When um, I first found out about being up here was uh, this morning on a text. When I first found out I was going to speak was when I sat up here. So that's how God will do you. But that doesn't bother me. Uh, not too long ago, I had an interview that I did for a teaching position. And I hadn't been teaching for years. And I walk into the interview and uh, they asked me, they said, I thought the interview was over. And they asked me, uh, just a second, we've got some other people to come in. We want you to teach a lesson. And so I had that much time to prepare to teach a lesson. And so that's what I did. So God will put you right there and he will try your heart and he'll walk you through things. And I said, I'll open my mouth wide and let him fill it. And that's what he's going to do. And so, uh, and that's what I expect. And that's the way I walk. So and that's the way we ought to walk and trusting this gospel, believing God. It's Jesus Christ in me anyway. He knows what he's going to say. Because God, he who God has sent, speaketh God's words. And so this is God and he sent Doyle and he sent those with him to the four corners of the earth to speak the word without fear or despair. And so that's what we do when we come here. We speak the word without fear and despair. And that word is not just word only, but it's power because it's the, the gospel. And I'm going to start by saying you need this gospel. 94 was the first time I heard this gospel. I heard it when I first heard a tape that said he rose again. 1994. I was baptized in the Holy Spirit in 93 before I ever heard of Water of Life Ministries. I began, I was baptized. Uh, in fact, I uh, had talked to somebody and I talked to them and they talked about how a person they knew would sit and pray in tongues. And I said, I want to do that. I want to be doing that. I want that. And I went to church with that person at a place that I hadn't been going. And uh, there was a minister that was traveling through. And that night said, is anybody here want to be baptized in the Holy Ghost? Well, what do you do after that? God's speaking to me. So I walked up and uh, the man prayed for me. And after praying for me, I began speaking in other tongues. So I was baptized in the Holy Ghost in 1993. I'd been baptized in water prior to that. I'd received Jesus when I was a kid. I was five, six years old. I don't know how old I was, but I was five, six years old. There were times when my mother had come in uh, uh, and I talked to her about the fact that I couldn't sleep at night. And um, she said, well, think on good things. I remember this conversation. Actually, the Lord reminded me of this conversation. I didn't remember it until I was in Broken Arrow when I needed it. When I was in Broken Arrow and needed it, the Lord brought it back to my remembrance. But I had, uh, I had asked my mother, I said, I, I can't sleep. Now I'm talking about six years old, seven, whatever, at this point, first grade. So first grader, you can believe God. You can trust God. You can talk to Jesus. And she said, think on good things. Well, what that meant to me, I said back to her, I'll think on Jesus. That's what I'll think on. I'll think on Jesus. And you know what? I got my sleep. And that was, you know, like I said, six, seven years old. I used to talk to Jesus and the Father all the time when I was a kid. So, I, and not to go along with that, uh, I believe my mom still has a tape right now that has where I have... Uh, I was telling a, a, a story on that tape and talking about how God was talking to me. And that was when I was seven years old or so. So God was talking to me at a young age. He ordained me as a prophet. And so uh, he was talking to me from a young age. So I was born again, baptized, and then baptized in the Holy Ghost before I came to Water of Life Ministries and heard this gospel for the first time. You need this gospel. Many people, what happens, you hear, uh, you're baptized, uh, you're, where you go to play, church, whatever, uh, you are baptized in the Holy Ghost, and, and as far as you know, that's it. What do you do now? Well, what happens many times to the denomination is what happens is, and then you go following the same thing, the pattern the world follows. And how do you do that? Oh, you want to go make sure you take care of all the young people, so what do you do? Go build yourself a gym. Go get this youth thing started. Get this youth thing started. Bring all the youth in. Demonstrate the power of God and the youth to be taken care of. So here's, what, here's, here's where I'm going at with this. When I was uh, growing up, I knew there were things with my heart that wasn't right. 
I was born again. I was talking to Jesus. But I knew there were some things in me that weren't right. In fact, as a middle schooler, I remember this. Why'd you make me this way? Because there were things with me that weren't right. And I knew it. You know there's things with you that aren't right. Talking to people here and those out the world. You know it. There's something in your heart that you need taken care of. You need this gospel. There were things that I was having difficulty overcoming. I was born again. I was baptized in water. And a baptism in water will deal with your old man. But you need this gospel. So there were things that I know in my heart that needed taken care of and I couldn't take care of it. Not in my own ability. And things that I know I needed to have dealt with. Was God working for me? Yes. Was Jesus still talking to me? Yes. He didn't forsake me as a boy. But there were things that I know I needed dealt with things in my heart. Hallelujah. And so, if you look in Hebrews chapter 6, you'll see there. Well, I'm going to go there. I didn't know if I would turn there or not. But this is what God brought up my heart this afternoon. Did I know what I was going to say? No. Did he? Yes. Hebrews chapter 6. Amen. You go to Hebrews chapter 6 and we'll look in uh, verse... Seven, for the earth which drinketh in the rain that cometh oft upon it and bringeth forth herbs meet for them by whom it is dressed receiveth blessing from God. But that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected and is nigh unto cursing whose end is to be burned. Thorns and briars in my heart. Rain coming upon it. What's the rain? It's the spirit of God coming upon the thorns and briars. You know, the Spirit of God, the gospel is ministered by the Spirit of God coming out of this place seven days a week upon the earth. Those computers get opened up. People tune into the broadcast. This ministry speaks to the principalities and powers in those areas, and the Spirit of God comes upon every person. Thorns and briars in my heart. I was baptized in the Holy Ghost. I was baptized in water. I'd received Jesus when I was little. But you, I needed this gospel. You know what deals with those thorns and briars? The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. When I first came here, you know, I'll go back. The night... Oh, I don't, I don't know the exact date, so I'm going to say this. When I was in high school, 94, I graduated high school in 91. I heard this gospel in 94. When I was in high school, you know, I told you earlier this morning, we went to Baptist and Assembly of God churches. M most often in our house, we would have a, an Assembly of God preacher playing on the TV as we were getting ready to go to church Many times going to the Baptist church. Well-known preacher. In fact, that um, Doyle, when he came to Tulsa on TV 47, he ended up being in the spot where that preacher was at. Well-known preacher. You still see him today. So that man was being played on our television set. Okay, so at some point when I was in high school, he was on TV talking about how he was a sinner, tears running down his eyes. For me, as a high schooler, I thought, if that man can't make it, how can I? That's where I was at. I'm not saying right or wrong, but that's what I thought because I knew things in my heart. You know, if God has showed you your heart, you know some things in your heart. God's who knows your heart. 
But I thought, how can I make it? That was high school. So I kept, you know, went on. 94, somebody handed me two tapes. He rose again. The gospel is always a blessing. And I listened to that tape. He rose again. On that tape, Paul Doyle talked about how Paul preached the gospel to the Corinthians. You can find it in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. He said, you're saved if you keep in memory. If you hold fast to the gospel, you're saved. Otherwise, your believing is vain. You know, the gospel is defined there. It's defined as how that Christ died for our sins. That's Jesus Christ. That he was buried according to the scriptures and, he's wrote, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's the gospel. That's power. It's not just words. That's the power that God demonstrated in everything that came with that. Your sanctification, your justification, your redemption back to the Father. Everything that came with that came through that death, burial, and resurrection of his son for you Amen. and me. But I, but I had not at that time in high school heard that. Oh, I believed that Jesus was alive. I talked to him. But I didn't trust that that was power for me to deal with those things that were in my heart, those thorns and those briars. I didn't know how to deal with it. I was baptized in the Holy Ghost, baptized in water. When I was, by the time that I received those tapes, I didn't know how to deal with the thorns and briars in my heart. <clears throat> you say, I'm baptized in the Holy Ghost. Good. You need the gospel. Amen. Amen. So I listened to that tape. I don't remember if this is on there or not, but what I got at some point whether it's from listening then or later on, but it's all being taught of God. In 1 John, it said, walking in that light, you love your brother, there is no occasion of stumbling. I'll turn there. I don't know that I quoted that just right. But not only that, I'll give you a chance to turn there and see it. One John chapter two, he that loveth his brother abideth in the light and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. Can you believe there could be none occasion of stumbling? If you love your brother and you walk in the light, love, you can see how do you love your brother? Turn over to chapter three. No, uh, chapter 4, 5. We're going to get there. Chapter 5. Chap uh, verse 2. By this we know that we love the children of God. This is how you know you love your brother. When we love God and keep his commandments. That's how you know, you're, know you love your brother. When you love God and keep his commandments. And no, we're not talking about the ten. We're talking about working in his word by the spirit of God. Whatever he's telling you that day. Amen. Loving your brother, you walk in the light. Guess what? He's not going to lead you into sin. There is none occasion of stumbling. Right. I didn't get that till I started, till I got the gospel. What is the light? The gospel. Amen. That's the light. Amen. That's what's going to deal with the thorns and briars in your heart. But you know why you don't see it? Because you don't believe. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 says that the God of this world, which is the devil, has blinded your minds because you will not believe the glorious light of the gospel. If you believe it, if you trust it, if you adhere to it, he'll deal with those thorns and briars. Will it be at once? No. In some cases, maybe. You know, I used to think that I could just, you know, sit there and join in and, you know, devil would come out of me to deal with some of these things. And maybe God will do you that way. But you know what I'm looking to do now? Overcome. Overcome that devil. Amen. Overcome those thorns and briars. 
and get them rooted out of my heart so that this gospel and so that Jesus Christ and his love can be rooted in me. Love for the Father and then love for his people. You love the Father, you do his works, you love his people. So that's where I believe God was having me share tonight. This goes through the world. You can play this broadcast again, but you need this gospel. This gospel's power. It's not just word. It's not words we speak. It's power. It's power to deal with the things in your heart, the things that you can't do on your own, which is nothing. You can't. Oh, you know, in those other denom in those denominations, that's what they deal with. Everything out here. That's why they want to keep the you know. Let's build the gym. Let's keep the kids off the street. Let's make up this program to keep the kids off the street. Let's do this to keep the kids off the street. Deal with the kid's heart with the gospel, and the kid will stay off the street unless he's preaching the gospel. That's all I got to say. <laughs> I think that's it, Doyle. I'll pass that back to you. Well, thank you, and let's give the Lord a great hand for hearing his gospel. Amen. 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 Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Man, I have not heard a better gospel in a long time. <laughs> Amen. Anyone else got anything to say? Well, why don't we worship the Father and the Son in spirit and truth? Amen. 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 Behold, I am the Lord.
mercy, grace. Mercy, grace. Mercy, grace. Be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, tomorrow, 10 a.m., you're going to hear more gospel and more praise and worship. Amen. 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 I'm looking forward to the fellowship hall. That's where we're going to be, isn't it? Amen, yes. Okay. Amen. Thank you. Good night. We invite you to visit Water of Life Church at 1621 18th Street in Plano, Texas. Or for further information, call area code 972-578-8082. That's 972-578-8082. Or write Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box 861327, Plano, Texas 75086. That's Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box 861327, Plano, Texas, 75086. This program was paid for by Water of Life Church.